Peace and blessings, family. Welcome to the Man to Man Show, where we talk like gods. I'm your host, Steve Jones, and of course, I got my brother, Mr. 19 Keys. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me catch up. Oh, uh, yeah. What, what, what's them right there you got on, man? man? that's them you society did. frames. You feel me? Yeah. Tell me yeah. about them. It's real heavy, as you can see, man. We got the insignia yeah. on the side. Oh, yeah. You understand me? This, this is for those that want to tap in when you want to walk around. And you want that extra glow of godliness connected. Because what here's the thing. You want to look smart, but you want to look good at the same time. Yeah. See, they, they lied to us. They told us that we had to look like Urkel, you know what I'm saying, to, in order to be smart. That's cap. That's fake. You can look smart and look good. Yeah. You feel me? You can be fly and, you know, self-aware. And if y'all know me, y'all know I keep a pair of glasses on. Yeah. To the point where people kept asking me, do y'all sell glasses? Well, now we do. <laughs> you can hit the link. Yes, we do. <laughs> right there for sure, but limited though, because once these run out, they ain't coming back. Yeah, yeah. we are gonna so come with a new know. style, so you better hurry up. But you know, today, 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 today's topic, man, is gonna get real personal. But I feel like it's mandatory for the culture, especially man, with the way the dynamics been shifting. You know, we have we deal with each other. Specifically, I want to deal with the siblings or the parent and the child relationship. Something had happened this week with T.I. and his family dynamic mm. at an Eagles game mm. in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Now, I don't know if um, you all seen the video, but T.I.'s son, he's, he's always been a um, problem child, as I should say. Even T.I. Says, says it himself that his son is the problem child of the family. Yeah. He tried to give him all the advice, but he never listened. So on this specific video, or this particular video I seen, they get into a physical altercation where T.I. had to rough him up after, and you know, a joke that turned into an argument that turned into a tug and pull. Uh-huh, a tug and pull. A tug and pull. A good old tug Cause that's and all pull. it was. He ain't like punch on his son and all that shit. He just had to let him know like, bro, I'm still your father. Yeah. But. This is where I draw the line. All right, so I want to talk about how the family relationship can become strained once you reach adulthood. Mm -hmm. And you are going to see me look at my phone a few times because I, I took notes for this. Because I, I real life want to get to the bottom of this and provide you all with, with some wisdom and guidance as you go through these changes. So the first thing I want to kick it off, right, I want to talk about the parent and child communication once your child reach adulthood. You know what I'm saying? As, as children so, grow into independent adults, the parent roles undergo an evolution that can sometimes become rocky. Right. And I, you know, as, as a man, I, I, I can be honest. And when I became an adult, I had a rocky relationship with my parents because I feel like, shit, I'm grown now. I already live by your rules and I ain't like a lot of your rules. So now I'm doing what the hell I want. Even though the advice may have been valid. Mm -hmm. But I ain't like your delivery, so I'm going to defy it. So I want to ask you, like, let's start from the beginning of you transitioning from being an adolescent into an adult. How was your family dynamic or relationship when it comes to communication with your parents? I think, first of all, that was that was a lot of different topics in it because even yeah. kind of going to the T.I. with his son thing, um... It's that whole feeling like the black sheep in the family. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And with family, the most important thing to set is boundaries. Mm. You feel me? Because family, we feel so familiar with each other. And it goes to that old saying, familiar breeds disrespect. Right? And it's not about what you think about a person. You have to be familiar or you have to be... Uh, having a level of empathy and understanding for who they think they are. Sometimes there's a disconnect between who a person thinks they are, right, and who they actually are. And I mean by, like, it's delusional if you don't represent those values, you ain't got no experience and no structure behind what you say you stand on, right? And Or it could be that a person don't know you enough to know that you've done things that you feel has now allowed you to reach this new pinnacle in life that you not who they you not who you used to be you know what i mean like a person may try to love bro you but you have been through some experience to be like no nah, this is my rites of passage i ain't love bro no more yeah. you feel me and now you got to treat me accordingly 
So that like disconnect is like a person treating you like yo, your yeah, old self, old me. and you showing up as like yo, I done got my experience, I done went through my growth, these are my achievements, I got my stripes, I done been through some things. So this is transforming, it's changed the way I think, the way I feel, the way I live. So it's like knowing that difference between who that person think they are, you feel me, and who you think they are, right? Because even in, a lot of times in relationships, it's like when a person changes, you gotta like, you have to learn how to like the new person that they become. Otherwise, you feel like they killing off the person that you like. You know what I mean? Like, I got to know you. You used to be this guy that was funny. You used to go out, blah, blah, blah. So when you start changing, they like, damn, the person that I had a connection with is no longer in existence, literally. Right. It's like if you bump your head, <clears throat> lose your memory, you a vessel for that consciousness, but you ain't got that same rhythm, thought, thinking, pattern, behavior, charisma, personality, none of that. So it's like, it's this thing where you got to update, you know what I mean, with each person, how you like to be respected, how you, how you want me to address you. Now, you can't go too far and above. Like, yeah. I ain't going to treat you like Godfather if, you know what I'm saying, you just one of the little goonies. See, see I feel like that's where I get rocky at. <clears throat> when you be trying to become the new version of yourself, of course your parents had their expectations of how they thought you was going to turn out based on their parenting, level, parenting skills when they was raising you. But when you do the complete opposite, like you said, they feel some type of way. So that's when the unsolicited advice comes. Maybe I don't want your advice right now. Maybe, 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 for an example, these new kids got social media. I didn't have it. Maybe I don't like social media, so I'm old school. I'm telling you to do it this way and do it this way, but you telling me, no, nah, I know what the hell I'm doing. I'm the one got these tools now. How do we bridge that? Because I feel like that's what's a lot going on right now, for real, for real. How do we bridge the unsolicited advice from a parent once you reach adulthood? I mean, as a parent, you got to learn boundaries as well. Like, mm. at some point in time, you know, it's always going to be your child, but they're not going to always be a child. Right. Right? And knowing that difference. Yeah. yeah, you are my child in the sense that you come from me, right? You come from the joining of your mother and father giving birth to a baby, but you're no longer a child, right? And a lot of parents don't know how to differentiate. You hear it all the time, like, you still my child. I'm like, yes, I am, but I'm not a child. And when parents can start recognizing you as grown and recognizing you as an adult, then they start dealing with you the same way they give the same respect to any other adult. You can't treat me differently because I'm your child, but you don't respect me as if you're respecting the other adult. You can't talk to me crazy. Right, right. You, it's certain things that you, you won't take. Right. And that's how everybody starts to set up, you know, who they believe they are. And it's like, yo, the, 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 the whole idea is the boundary. You feel mm. me? Like, if you ain't got no boundary on how you deal with me, then of course you're going to be disrespectful because you don't even know when you're stepping over that line and you don't care. You feel me? So it's like, and, and going back to that conversation, you talked about him scrapping with his pops. You feel me? You know, uh, shit. Have you scrapped with your pops? Um, to be honest, why you like me? I like being transparent about things. It was a period in time where, yes, I was hella disrespectful to my parents because I was in the streets, and this I had a, like, I had so feel like Mari. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> no, I had somewhat like success. I had some <laughs> somewhat success <laughs> when it comes to the streets. Shit. Shit. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. I knocked his ass out before. <laughs> Nah, let me quit yeah. playing though. But nah, for real though. No. Nah, for real though. Me and my pops did scrap before. Okay. You know, I did knock his ass. That's out crazy because y'all the same height. I know that look crazy. But from looking the back, I, I, of course, we, we didn't. This is years ago. Let me stop. And we apologized and we got over yeah. there. But I feel like it made our um, relationship even stronger That's and more up. open to where I could communicate with him better because now I'm not your little yeah. little man anymore. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, handle yeah, me yeah, that yeah, way. You, that you know respect. what I'm saying? So now, but. By all means, I would never be an advocate of whooping your parents' ass. Having a, you know what I'm saying, the child, even even they getting to that point where a parent feel they can put their hand on their adult child. Right. I'm against it all. I feel like there's better ways to do it. Now, unfortunately, at the time, I didn't have a template of a better way. But now, as me being a man and having a child myself, bro, I would be like shattered if my daughter put her hands on me. 
You know what I'm saying? Like as a man, that would shatter my my whole ego, everything. Like I'm I'm against it. You know. So you think that? <clears throat> do you think parents should beat their child? Because if a child beat their parents, it's gonna be an issue. I feel like communication, my my tonality, and the way that I I talk, and the way that I even segue into the conversation, those skills have to be at a high level before I. And you know what I'm saying, jump straight into the physical altercation. If I ain't tried to do none of those yet, I can't put get physical. Mm. Feel what I'm saying? I don't think it's, I mean, <clears throat> but I, I don't think you, all right, so yeah, that's for a younger child. Yeah. Even as I don't an adult, think though. Physical just don't really work. Yeah, it don't. I Cause, think it make it worse. Because physical pain doesn't mean you learn anything. You know what I'm saying? It's like you trying to train a dog. You know what I mean? It's like past laws dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we, like, my grandma beat me with a twitch. Pops done whooped us with brooms. Mom done beat us with belts. Everything you can name in the book. You know what I'm saying? But that ain't never teach me nothing because at a certain point in time, I had a, a pain tolerance. Yeah. So I just fake like it hurt it because I knew that this was their response to whatever I did. What was the, 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 the thing that they could have done is really just sit down and communicate with me. Well, yeah. the reason, right, wrong, blah, 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 Zay, but... It wasn't until like they took away access and privilege to go outside that was the more issue that I had because I was a child that wanted to be outside. But the the beating, that wasn't nothing. We kept getting in them kind of trouble because at a certain point in time, you can't keep beating me anyway. At that point in time where it felt like I can just grab the belt, like why would I let you beat me? I'm not a slave. You know yeah. what I mean? I got to literally sit here and respect you so much, I'm going to let you punish me when I realize my physical strength. Yeah. No, at a certain point and, in time, I'm not letting you do that. Yeah. So that go for mom and pops. Like, it is what and, it is. And you're going to always need your parents. Because like, you just reminded me, bro. This, like I said, that situation happened years ago. I had to be about 20 yeah. before I even had a child, you know. <clears throat> but a couple weeks or a month or two after that, I got locked up. And I did two years in jail. Mm. And guess who I wanted to talk to the most? My pops. I was in jail. I ain't... And I knew that, that I went in, it was a rocky situation, bro. And all I needed to hear was from him. You feel what I'm saying? And that shit fucked me up at the time because it was like, damn, I can't even pick up the phone and really call him, you know. But I ended up picking up the phone within that, me doing those two years in jail. I picked up the phone and then called him. And it was like, we never even had to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know with men, it's different. Because men, men, we learn different, especially like their relationship between a boy and a father is different than uh, a boy and his mother. Your mother, you got to you you gotta end up going back and repairing, going through those yeah. emotions, you feel me, to, to figure things out. But with your father, it's like, bro, what's understood? Ain't got to be said. Yeah. I get you, youngster. You know what I'm saying? You was feeling yourself. You jumped out there. I, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> get you back in line. We, we straightened it out. It was good. You feel me? We good on you that. You can't do nothing with me. <laughs> you, can't do, you can't do nothing with me. Hey, Stay no, because me and my pops got into it a bunch of times. Pop, goddamn pulled out knives, guns, everything you could think of. Cause you know, when you when your father's mm. just like like that, you know what I mean? They don't ever want to get their ass whooped by their son because yeah. they like, I'll kill you. So so this is the last thing I want to say about that situation. If that was you, if you was TI, how would you renegotiate that whole situation before it even got physical? Man, that's a tough one. See, you gotta cause it, it's hard to put yourself in somebody's shoes because I'm a person don't get angry easily. But once you take me there, I'm not always the best person that know how to temper down. Right. But it takes a it takes a, a lot to get me there. Right. But like so if I felt like I'm dealing with somebody, whether they're in the family, whether it's friend, whether it's whether it's somebody's from the public, um private stranger, whatever, and you take me to that level, it's like now you gotta deal with getting me out my character, right? So to avoid that, you know, you you, you gotta be like you got to outsmart them in a sense. Mm. Man, I know what's going on with you. Your ego is about to be bruised. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm antagonizing and bruising it on purpose because you need this. Yeah. You feel me? Like, it's it's all kind of different lessons. Like, you got to think of, like, you a Native American warrior. You trying to train your little uh, 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 knucklehead, egotistical little son. That's, he wants to be a warrior, but he kind of, you know what I mean? He jumping out of sight right now. Yeah. And it's like, all right, you go purposely put him in a situation where you can show him who he is. Like, you ain't ready for this yet, son. Yeah. You feel me? And I think society don't get that too, though. Like, sometimes you got to take your child through those different rites of passage. You feel me? Like, hey, you say you are this? Well, let me test your gangster then. First of all, are you, 
because it's different levels. Like emotionally, you're not even secure to be on this. Right. You know what I mean? Emotionally, if you let the world get you like this and you ain't got the ability to to deal with this type of situation, how you gonna deal with the streets? How you gonna deal with people in the world? You feel me? So like for me as a father, if I got a knucklehead son, that's the way I'm teaching him. Like, bro, you know, in that situation, forget all of like what happened between us. Look at your behavior. Look how you responded. You know what I'm saying? Like as a man, you got to learn how to process your emotions at a higher level. And anytime you can let somebody take you out, you feel me, of man, yourself. <laughs> and Yeah, they yeah. controlling you. So it'd be like, listen, I did that to show you I got control over you. Mm. So now you can't tell me you a man until I can no longer control you. Right. So if you can't stay calm and your hand don't stay steady in that situation, regardless, you ain't ready for what you say you're ready for. Mm. You feel me? So I feel like for me, like I'm going to go and turn everything into a lesson. But then at the beginning, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you sometimes you got to deal with like sometimes your son need an ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's just a reality of it. And, and then sometimes they just need to be really like set down and communicated with. But then sometimes they so goddamn hard headed. They, they listen, but they don't learn. Yeah. You feel me? So it's like you have to deal with the child based on the customization of who they are, right? And that situation of how to get them to, like, what's your goal? What do you want to get mm. them to? You want them to be emotionally more mature, right? You want them to be physically right. capable. You want them to be <clears throat> mentally, you know what I'm saying, independent and, and mature, like, What's your goal with each child? And you can measure based on how you deal with them in that situation if that's helping them reach that goal that you even have in mind for them. You feel me? Yeah. Like, it's just, it's a whole, like, you know, parenting it's a, it's a is lot. It's a whole game. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, huh? Yeah, you growing up a little warrior. You just said something that's key to me, right? You say they listen, but they don't learn, uh -huh. right? So, you know me, I'm, I'm the curveball guy. I got to throw this curveball, and we're going to switch the whole dynamic from the parent and the child. We're going to talk about the relationship with the siblings, your brother and your sisters. Mm -hmm. You did. Now, growing up with your siblings, right, got a close relationship. You know, these are people you go outside and play with. When y'all get into school, you're going to jump in the fight, help them or not. Then you move on to adulthood. Y'all move on, y'all go y'all separate ways, mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying, figuring out how to do this adult thing. Right. And siblings, uh, uh, some let's say one sibling becomes successful and the other one ain't pretty much doing too good. So they project all of their feelings off on you. How do you maneuver through that? <laughs> Because, like, I, I be having situations like that that I deal with all the time. And they, uh, uh, I, I actually got a text today. They say that I ain't tapping all the way into my big brother duties because, like, I don't really, like, check on them because they be, even though they display that, they strong, strong and all of that, they be wishing that I asked what's going on for real, like, mentally. But I try to tell them, like, I done gave y'all all the advice and y'all never follow it. Y'all be listening, but y'all ain't learning. So I'm at a point now where I got to just do me. I ain't got time to focus on that and run the business at the same time, you know? So how do you deal with that? Or do you even have problems like that? Hell yeah. I mean, shit, I probably have them at, I mean, I, I have them at higher levels and for different reasons for, than most people. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of the successful you know what I mean, people in my family generation, right? Yeah. Not just my immediate family, but like generations of my family, right? Which would be, if I was in anybody else's family, it'd be the same. Like, right. I, I don't take it personal because I look at myself like, yeah, I look at yourself as a, like a character in the family. Like if I was placed in your family or Solomon family, anybody family, I'm still going to be a character to where everybody else now judge themselves based on me. You feel yeah. me? Whether I'm the older brother or a younger brother, and then based on the level of success I have in life or, you know, whatever it is, you start creating these narratives and stories in your head. You right. feel me? So it's like I don't take it personal because I understand that my success is going to come with that, that people are going to automatically say, okay, well, you can handle more. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and people, you should help me more. The person in the family that's the most successful has to help people more than anybody in the family. That's kind of the thing. Then it gets to that whole point where, the book 
the whole thing is that if you are the successful one in the family in the sense that, you know, and I measure success by your ability to meet your goals. Right. So I'm not just saying successful as some generic term, but like you say things and you do them, right? And it comes with the rewards of that execution. That's me. That's right. my template for success. But if you that person in that family, number one, not only that you expect it to be there financially for people, but you expect it at certain point times to be there emotionally. Yeah. But here's the problem with that, and this is where a lot of people are not empathetic. You have less time because you are, you know, doing those things that make you successful, right? Because you're focused on the goals and you're not constantly creating more issues and problems and drama for the family. You end up being the less, the most least problematic in the family, right? Right. So a person is not typically dealing with your issues or your problems at all. Right. Cause you're usually that strong rock force in the family to where you don't call people for your problems. They call you for theirs, right? And then when people do call you, because you're the lifeline when they get into trouble, they don't even realize they calling you when they have a problem all the time. Right. So what does that do to you? You now connect them to stress. Right? My body knows when I see a certain call. If you always call me about problems, my body will feel like cortisol yeah. release. I'm actually stressed out by this call immediately. You may be causing me anxiety. Mm. You know what so I'm how do you comfort your sibling without suppressing your feelings? Because you just told me like, damn, now it became a pattern. So now I feel like I'm stressed. I don't always feel like I need to. I, 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 I don't feel mm. like you should over lean on family, right? And, and feel like you know, family has to be there. If they not, then the world is against you. I feel like that's a victim mentality and it's an easy way to project blame onto others without taking the accountability of your own actions. Right. Nobody is there for me. That's false. You know what I mean? And nobody has to always be there. This whole thing where family has to be involved in every yeah. issue, problem, thing that you go through, that's the thing that breaks families. You know what I'm saying? It's like, let's be there yeah, we're going to be there for each other. Like, I mean, on some, like, reality terms, like when my older brother used to get into stuff, he'd call us, whether it's some street stuff, we literally go pull up physically, we there for you. You know what I'm saying? But if you having an emotional breakdown and he does that goddamn 30 times out the year, I don't need there to be there for everyone. I don't need you to call me every time you get emotional. That's something you got to learn how yeah. to emotionally process as a man. And yeah. for me not being there, you can't project that and say you're not being a brother. No, yeah. I, I will be being a bad brother if I allow myself yeah. to be your crutch because I know you're never going to be able to stop having this pattern of problems. How you going to break the cycle if the cycle is problem, then lean on me as a crutch? Yeah. See, my, my thing stronger? with it, right, I got a lot of brothers and sisters, right? So when they call me, my thing is, like, I speak in conclusion. I already know what the problem is. All right, we, are, we black, we got a dysfunctional family. If, if, if I don't got a dysfunctional family, I know a dysfunctional family. I know how to deal with it. I'm, I done made it to the 30s, man. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. but, but F all that, I don't, let's, let's get past that. What's the solution? Now, once I come with the solution and you don't take heed or nothing, or, or you don't put an action behind that, then I'm done with the situation. And of course, you're going to feel some type of way like I don't cut. It ain't that I don't cut. It is I don't got the time. That ain't what my focus is. My focus is like pulling out, unleashing my passion and renewing myself and trying to become the highest level right. of me. You know what I'm saying? But, I don't got time for it, especially when I'm in another city. Don't call me about St. Louis problems and I'm all the way over in London yeah, or something. That's, you know, that's I hate it. I really but, hate but it. But see, that goes where families don't want to deal with their deeper issues. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If families can't have conversations about their deeper issues, and as I was listening to a uh, holistic psychologist, she was talking about how one person ends up being the scapegoat, right? So it's usually the one that's the most sensitive or the one that's the most like outspoken, you know what I mean? The stern one in the family. So it's like, you start to see that as well. It's like, if you can sit down with your family, and this is about any relationships, if y'all can have tough conversations about like the root of things, yeah, you can get past them. If y'all only deal with the issues that spawn from the root of problems, you never, you never go get past them. And y'all will always yeah. be dealing with the surface issue and never the root. Yeah. So in order for families to start to heal, you got to deal with the, the deep truths in the families. Let's go. We got to I mean, we got to go a little far back. Stuff that we don't want to talk about. Well, some some that I figured out today. Right. Like you said, they go back to the root. 
And I probably shouldn't disclose it, but I'm going to do it because I feel like there's other viewers that deal with this. I had a little sister, she feel like my mom verbal abused her, right, a lot, right? Because my mom don't like the shit that she indulged in, of course, you know. But my mom didn't have her mother. She passed when she was mm. a kid. So I never thought of it that way. She never knew how to have a, a, a parent daughter talk. So my mama instantly going to, girl, you doing this shit wrong, gonna fuss at her, you know what I'm saying? I never even put that correlation together and I didn't realize it until this morning. If you grow up in an environment of chaos, then, you know, like, I grew up seeing my mother and father argue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I seen them have physical fights, altercations, yeah. being loud. I seen where, you know what I mean, how they triggered each other consistently. And it's funny, one of my best memories in life is it connected to a song. It's your anniversary. Mm -hmm. Ooh -wee -ooh. And that's because back in the day they used to play it in the that's, car. That song, that part you wasn't in the song me? though. Huh? Ee that wasn't in the song. Hey, that's how I <laughs> you don't be messing with my memories. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, listen, I don't know how y'all played it in your car. What's the memory though? So my mom and dad used to play it on their anniversary. And I just remember all of us being inside the car, listening to the song, vibing. And it just felt like the happiest time in life. And it's like, you forget about how, number one, the child is affected by seeing their mother and father together. Yeah. And how the child is affected by seeing their mother and father apart. Like the, the times that my mother and father had the affection for each other, like that love was infectious. It spread all throughout the siblings. You know what I'm saying? And then when they had that vitriol and hate towards each other, that spread throughout the siblings as well. The way we see each other, the way we deal with each other, and the way we see ourselves, right? And so, you know, when you grow up in that environment, when you got all of this chaos, and this is how you learn how to communicate and deal with things as well, with loved ones, specifically, yeah. right? So my father didn't have his father, right? My mother had her mother, but my grandma was, you know, she was wild one too. She grew up in a different era. Yeah. You feel me? My pop's mom's was, was a wild one. You feel me? Like on both sides. Right. So we got these generations of men and women in the family that's been messed up. <laughs> and it's like that child on our mothers and fathers on both sides never even had the opportunity to see a well-functioning relationship with yeah. just pure love. I didn't. And it's funny that you even said that, right? You got to talking about the grandmas. That was the advice I gave my sister. Little do you know, I told her. I said, you know, the reason I don't really hold grudges against our parents or nothing, even when they verbal abuse us and all of that, they didn't have a template on it. All, all they had was the same agendas forced on them, mm -hmm. just like today, that was strategically designed for them to act in that way. Right. So now that I know this, I can't even be mad at you. You might not even know that you were programmed to respond that way, you know. But just because I'm aware, on oh God, I forgive you. Yeah. And this how I'm going to move and respond in this situation. I had to break it down to it like that. But this shit's been happening for generations on generations on generations. Just so happened that we want to be generational curse breakers. Yeah. You feel and, me? And, but see, being a generational curse breaker in the family is tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, and, and I applaud anybody that takes on that challenge to see the pattern that's in the family. Yeah. See the cycle. Like, let me ask you a question. Like, when was, when was the last time you remember seeing your parents together, like happy? Man, I tried to get a picture with my mom and my dad as an adult. I never got it. Mm. To this day, I don't have a picture with my mom and my dad, and we all in the same picture. You got a memory? The last time I seen them together, I had to be in like, uh, I won student of the year in fourth grade. Mm. And see, like, you, you got to think about, like, these transition periods in life. Like, the last time I had a song where it say, I remember the last time I seen my mother and father kiss. Yeah. Right? And it's like, for, like, a child, that's like the, the, the you have to mourn a relationship. Like, you mourn the, 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 the woman that your mother was with your father in a loving relationship. You mourn the man that your father was in a loving relationship with your mother. Right, you gotta mourn these people because they change after that. Yeah. Right, and they may not notice the changes, but those changes 
are noticed by children in a small ways because they go tweak their behaviors in different ways. Yeah. Right. And so it's like there's this mourning process as a child that you go through and it's not a physical death. Right. It's the death of these relationships, the death yeah. of these people that, you know, it's the death of these times. <laughs> like we enter in a new era now. Like and we got to figure out how do I maneuver in this single parent dynamic now. You bro, feel being, a, being a and for me, when that happened, when that split happened, I was glad that it happened because it was toxic. Right. But the byproduct of that was a woman can't raise me alone, mm. which means I got to go out and find this masculine energy to be around. And I, I still hang with the wrong type of crowd. You feel me? The masculinity that was in my hood was gangsters. You did? That shit, like, kind of stirred me off course for a while. Man, I ain't you feel you off course. When you, when you when you jumped off that little porch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we was gangster. You I know mean, what I'm I probably stirred you off course, if Stop anything. It. You went to a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you went to Greenbrook. <laughs> You was a, a private school. I did go to private school, you. but I was like, I felt like I was like. A, I went to private school before if public. I, if I could break this different. down, I felt like I was like, I was a thinker in the streets, though. I always been a thinker. And I feel like that's probably how we bonded. Yeah. We was always a thinker, too. We were never like the guys in the hood that you can just tell what to do and do some stupid shit. We never was that. But I remember when, but I, listen, I remember when, like, you used to hop off the porch. And we used to catch you walking home, and people used to try to bully you, slap your books out your hands, and we taught you how to fight that time. And after that, well, you got tough. <laughs> Somebody like, slapped nah, straight up. Like, you got tough, bro. Like, it was good to Stop see you grow. I don't even like, know why I just gave him the fist bump on this. <laughs> you got Try tough. to smack my books out my hand. <laughs> you got you No, I ain't gonna lie. Watching you fight was a marvelous thing. Because I, I know I'm not dead serious. I, <laughs> I, I didn't know like little people could fight that good. <laughs> you, bro, I'm being serious. I didn't know that. No, because I thought based on like your reach and your legs, mm. it was like you go automatically lose. But when I seen it, I remember just like just just being in Marvel. Like the air was like it was a different quality of air that <laughs> it day. It started thunderstorm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, like it was this, it was I, it might have been at Gateway or might have been in the streets. I'm trying to remember. But I just remember somebody playing with you and you just <laughs> and then you like, oh, I'm like, look at this. It was like watching like, <laughs> you you know, in Street Fighter, uh, you got high under a Dowsum and like high under, well, he, he, yeah, he was, mm -hmm. he would get low, but your hands would reach like Dowsum across the screen. I didn't know how you stretch your hands like that to hit people in the face. It's called melanin magic. And you, and, <laughs> and you used to pick people up and drop them. And then I learned the science because you got a, a low center of gravity. <laughs> I had to I had to research this stuff. And this is before Google. So I had to go to the library to research this. <laughs> I wanted to figure Man. this out. Because you know, when you tall, you think you See, got See, this is what happens it. when you have... <laughs> Friends you that you grew up with when you was a, a child, bro. You, think you got an automatic. They joke all somebody. day. But listen, let's get back to the, the thing. Man, and, that was just you a did. Side story. All right, so now I want to like segue into how protecting our peace when it comes to the family dynamic. All right. This is like one of the things that you got to keep updating within yourself because as time go on, more problems occur. More money, more problems. Mm, ain't that the truth. More money, more problems. Let me say that again, because everybody, like, a lot of this root problems be money. Yeah. A lot of sure. the root problems be money. And then I feel like you, the one that got to solve the problem with money and never be recuperated from it because you mm. know how to get the money. So when it comes for me personally protecting my peace, I do was necessary as far as, cause I got a number of women. I don't have nephews. I got nieces and sisters. My brothers, they don't really ask for nothing. They, they, they petty if they ask me for something. So I'm gonna get them what they ask for. <laughs> that ain't nothing, but it don't ever stop when it comes to the girls, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. for me, my mental peace, I'd be like, damn, I gotta get it. I know damn well I can't ask my women for nothing back. You know what I'm saying? Even though, it becomes like damn and straining. I feel like 
I still just got to get to it. But how do you deal with protecting your peace as being Mr. 19 Keys? Um, <clears throat> I got boundaries, bro. I, I think that, like, that just keeps coming back for me. You know, like, you got to set them boundaries in life because it's like I don't allow myself to get drained to a certain extent. It's a, They got an ignore button on the call. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they shouldn't even call it ignore button. They should call it the peace button. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> the red peace button. Yeah. Like you want to deal with you you can answer or do you want peace? You know what I'm saying? I'm in ignoring. I'm I'm choosing peace. Right? Because that's what you're doing literally when you're dealing with certain people. They calling you with problems and yeah. I'm choosing peace. Yeah. Right? It's like the idea that you gotta it's I think it's a toxic thing to think everybody gotta be involved in your problems. No, nah, they don't. And it makes you it, it decreases your inability and your experience to deal with them yourself, right? Sometimes a person got to hit their lowest low in order before they start to rise up. They got to go through their phoenix. Everything got to be burnt down. They got to hit that low point where all that stuff that you've been trying to tell them finally sink in because they finally at a low point, right, to where they start listening to that advice. And you know people hit you with that yeah. all the time. Man, you was right. No, stay in that. Stay in that for a while. <laughs> I ain't helping you. Stay in that because this is the best I heard you in a long time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know I was right, but I don't need to hear it. You yeah. need to understand why I was right. Has, has it ever became such a problem where it actually, like, drained your work ethic trying to run a business or being for a business sure. leader? For sure. And what was your um, coping mechanism for that? Separation. It's always going to go back to separation. I need my sin. You know what I'm saying? Cue the Andre 3000 flutes and the Janae Aiko sound bowls. Let me get my zen. I need to get away yeah. from this. Because cause you, you, you operate in life at a baseline, right? Like I start tracking my health, right? To where I know when I'm getting anxiety and stress. And what you realize is that you got like a certain baseline. You feel me? Mm. And it takes a while. Like I got this little ring and it takes a while for it to track what your baseline is. Yeah. You, to know when you are having anxiety or not. So it's like, I remember having anxiety. My mind was cycling over the same thoughts over and over, and there was nothing I could do about it, right? And it was about future things that was going to happen, right? Based on past things that already happened. And it's like, at a certain point in time, you have to go through the, the dark night of the soul. You have to mm. go through the darkness, and you have to go through it. And here's the problem is people don't always go through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, people try to go around it. They try to avoid it. Right. Me, I'm not a person that ever tries to avoid a feeling. Yeah. I don't mind the feeling. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, I just find the time to deal with it. Yeah. Right. If it's a feeling of shame, maybe I can't deal with it right now. I'm about to do this work, but I'm going to find time yeah. to sit with that feeling to go through it. Yeah. Right. To Because in my heart of hearts, I believe I'm a good person. So then I'm not going to suppress that. I got to I got to then go through. Why do I feel that way? Where does that come from? <clears throat> What's the root of that? So for me, I feel like, you know, when I when I deal with those type of things, I just really try to find that time. To like, give me my my time. And I set boundaries with everybody, and it's a no on everything until it's a yes with me. You feel me? Yeah. Like, are you ready? Yes. Nah, yeah. Let's do it. Otherwise, mm. like right now, we travel so much, man, that stuff can breed anxiety because you don't get a rhythm and pattern. So you know what? Say no to the next opportunity so I can say yes to myself. Yes, I got the time for myself. You feel me? You got to make time for yourself daily. Mm. I might have to start incorporating new routines because what happened is I got to start looking at why, why am I not recharged? Every day you wake up, there's a certain level of readiness that you should have for the day. Yeah. Right? Some days you wake up and your body, I don't want to do nothing. Oh, I'm tired. Right? You should wake up every day with a certain amount of readiness. I'm ready to go. And how long it takes you to get to that point of readiness is how you can grade yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now check Ooh, this out. Chinging. Yeah, I heard. I heard. You see what I'm That's that generational curse sound yeah, right there. Somebody got some <laughs> Now, if y'all notice, right, this whole conversation, right, I ain't say nothing about counseling. And I strategically did that because I wanted you all to sit back and listen to this conversation of how we can fix this problem within our family on our own, just by communication. And I just wanted to spark that thought of how, let's do this first, let's try to do this first. If don't none of this work out, none of these right. strategies that we just shared, 
then that's when y'all go to counseling. But I feel like before y'all bring other people within the situation and the problem, I feel like we can be adults and like communicate with a with a with a with a nice tonality or and have our thoughts outlined of what we want to express and listen and you know come to a solution mm -hmm. before we even have to go to therapy and deal with all of that. See, look, and, and I like that you said that, and I'm about to read something to you, and, and and we go both react off this, knowing when. Not impulsively, but after careful thought and self-reflection to quit, right, allows us to find things we're actually meant to do. Yet our culture glorifies never give up and never be a quitter. Knowing when to quit instead of pushing yourself down a path you're not meant for is a sign of self-awareness. We all grow, evolve at times and need to move on. So it's like, I actually like that. I just don't like the word quit because it, it has a negative connotation. It's like, yeah. When I worked a job, I always say I fired my job. Right, right, right. Learning when to fire something, learning when to let go of something, right? Because quitting is like, it does feel like um, failure, right? Right. That's what it denotes. But it also could be a representation that this thing doesn't flow with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and, and I, I feel finally like, recognize that. Right. So I'm going to try Find something that thing different. That does. Yeah. And, I, and I also believe that in the sense that you don't have to be passionate about everything oh bless me yeah, yeah, your, your nose is actually kind of big i should have had a gospel singer say bless you or something but go ahead everything big to you brother <laughs> pause pause um I'm just, I'm <laughs> no, about no, nah man finish this it was a height joke chill <laughs> nah, you know what i'm saying <laughs> that was a tall order for you to get it's all good <laughs> But no, I mean like in real life, I don't like to quit nothing. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. I I get that. I don't like qu quitting. I don't like giving up. I don't like any of those. But also like that relationship with like that feeling and that emotion is what allows me to be such a good worker. But I also could be trying to do things that I should have I should have delegated to somebody else or I should have moved on to another task. Right. So it can become toxic in that sense that you're constantly trying to do something. That's just a signal that you're not good at something, making you feel less about yourself, mm -hmm. right? And you stuck in this cycle. And then sometimes it can be, you know, maybe you don't have, you don't feel confident enough about your abilities, right? So your execution is low quality and you're quitting because you haven't got confident enough about your own abilities. So sometimes I'd be like, no, I can do this and I do it, right? So sometimes it's like your technique, your skill level, your level of confidence so you got to know what is that thing that's stopping you from you know accomplishing that goal mm -hmm. and when to pivot so i feel like quitting can be replaced with pivot in that particular situation right. but i do think that there are some people doing things that will uh that they should have pivoted from a long time ago but they're not self-aware yeah. enough to know i mean i definitely deal with everybody every family deal with that I was trying to give somebody advice and they go continue the same cycle. And then, then you look up, it's been years and years and years. You're like, damn, I've been told you to pivot from that. You ain't let it go yet. And then you mad because now I don't want to listen to the problem or I ain't got nothing to say this time or I ain't answer the phone. So now I'm the bad guy. Mm. That gives me to something that someone won't go into, the black sheep in the family. Yeah. I used to be the black sheep for sure. I, I, I <clears throat> believe that being a black sheep could just represent a, a rareness in your personality, your 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 human design, your life path number, right? Let's say if everybody in the family Virgos and you the one that's a cancer, of course you're gonna be different than everybody in the family. Right? So you may end up being the black sheep just simply because you're different. Right. Right? <clears throat> Not that it's anything wrong with you. It's just that these people may not understand. You take that person to a family that has cancers or used to dealing with cancers in the family because they got two, three more of them in the family. So now they be like, oh, no, I get this person. I don't know why y'all don't. Right. Right. And so a, a, a black sheep is just a person in the circumstance to me that's rare. Right. That's not the norm. But it doesn't mean negative. Right. And people have to learn how to appreciate their rareness yeah. in reality. And understand that because I'm not understood means that I'm rare. And, you know, in terms of like the way that farmers look at black sheep is different because they couldn't dye them. But in reality with people, you know, being the black sheep, right, means that you have more valuable and something is rare. 
So I've always learned how to embrace that, right? When I was in the hood and I dressed <clears> better than everybody else and they didn't understand it, I understood I'm the black sheep. You know what I'm saying? Bro, you had one dicky spit. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, one. I was so tired of him wearing this dicky fit. <laughs> I had two. I had the khaki and the black one, first of all. <laughs> he got the second one two years later. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. We weren't even uh, wearing Diggy's fits no I more. But he I was got on my the West second. Coast hype, man. I grew up. You feel me? Listening to Dub Nation and yeah. Ice Cube and Game. And, it. Yeah, I'm walking outside with West West, West Coast connections. I'm like, first of all, bro, this is St. Louis. We don't even wear Diggy's fits. Y'all didn't even know. I, <laughs> like, geez, nah, they all laughed at West Coast rappers. You feel me? That's you what I was like. Gotta relax, first off. I ain't even tripping. I was definitely a black sheep in the group. <clears throat> but yeah, you was the black sheep for sure, for sure. But. That's why I rock with you though. You was wrong. You wasn't like the rest of. I ain't agree with a lot of those the other guys in the hood. Like that just wasn't. Like I said, I ain't. I don't know. I'm I'm a black sheep in, in my family too. So you know the black sheep recognize the black sheep. You feel what I'm saying? And now we just we changing the world. Now black wolves, man. <laughs> sheep the changing wolves. the fucking world. You, you did. You feel me? Like that's that's on a the beauty, positive though. tip though. This time you did. So I want to thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of the Man the Man podcast. And I want to exclusively shout out my brother Rance 1500 for letting us use the Sound for Academy sure. in LA today. Of course, y'all got um, y'all gonna start seeing more with you know my brother 19 Keys, Rance 1500, the whole team and whatnot. And make sure y'all um yeah give it to family right, first yeah, and yeah, fix yeah. that problem. Remember the focus on the root, not the fruit. Yeah, you did. And then while you at it. Tell them you're going to take them out tonight, and man. You're just going to put on some clothes, get flat, and don't forget to cop, you know, um, Crown Society yeah. shades, man. You did. This is the flags of the flags. They yeah. don't even make nothing like this. This nah, is actually man, custom. You dig you what I'm saying? The, oh, the, and speaking of black sheep and the rare form of our everything or whatnot, I only made a specific number of these. Once they're sold out, you'll never see them again. Never. And they come with a free gift and a song. For sure. So tap in. But yeah, man, this has been Man and Man Podcast. I'm 19 Key. That's Steve. And it's sponsored by Goldwater. Make sure you get your Smart Moss. Make sure you get your Goldwater. Yeah. We have Brainstorm Coffee coming out. Uh, we have a slew of new products, Crown Z Oil, right? A brain new tropic to have you tapped in, get that rusty lock mind moving. It's like Viagra for the brain. Make sure you pop you some of those pills, wake up, and your readiness will be at a high level. You know what I'm talking about? And then, of course, you get your Crown Society. Got your high-level conversation gear. For sure, for sure. And we got more coming. So make sure y'all continue to tap in. I appreciate y'all if you ain't ending with the outro. This is the end of the Man to Man podcast. <laughs> I don't even know what season this is. It don't even matter. Just make sure you tune in to the so next one episode. episode per season. You so did? we don't season. Appreciate <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> This is a good one. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Good energy on that. Huh?
And bro, don't forget, bro, on this episode, you gotta ask me more questions, bro. I gotta get like. All right, cuz I got you. I be wanting some clips and shit to chop too. You what did? shit? You say something then. Man, I'm telling you. What you want me to ask you? How you feel about me and your mama's relationship? Oh, you can ask me about me and your mama. It don't make me no difference. How she became your grandma because <laughs> shit. <laughs> me and your mama. <laughs> <laughs> the real reason y'all could move to St. Louis. <laughs> you yeah, about? you know the real reason. I thought she was pregnant. Uh, no, I you thought it was thought you had another yeah. brother on the way. I'm tell you why they really call you, you 19 kids. Yeah. <laughs> I thought shit. you had another brother on the way. Your mama changed the locks oh, on me 19 brother. times. I keep coming back. Because <laughs> oh, you was mad about what was happening. She said, boy, that's between you. I'm done with him. Get my key back from she him. She talking about that's between your partner they and your mama. They got 19 keys back from you. I said, listen, man. <laughs> I, I, listen, when you was gone, I held it down. That's all. Listen. That's all. I'm just saying. And you ain't, gotta, you ain't got to take that Bruh, person. So your mama don't ask about me every time she called. My mama don't know you. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. She don't even know you, bro. My mom loves me. She don't know you. <laughs> she don't know you. <laughs> Who the fuck is Steven? <laughs> she still trying um, to figure that shit out to this day. Because I was living two different lives. <laughs> yeah, we good as long as you shut the door. Oh, I thought she said, well, you shut the fuck up. Well, damn, <laughs> Nah, man, I that ain't did. Crazy. I fucking Solomon, cat. I only talk to Samaya like that. <laughs> no, this no, no, you don't. Samaya <laughs> beat your ass. <laughs> ah, you know the car ride home, everybody quiet and shit. I actually went through that. Hey, like, that was a funny day. That was funny, cuz. I ain't gonna cap you that. I ain't gonna lie, cuz. Yeah, that was funny, cuz. Nigga say, he broke the sound and say, just pull up to this wall, cuz. For sure, for sure. I need an ice pack. For sure, for sure. Well, I ain't wanna, I have. I had uh, Invest Fest, nigga, fighting the day hey, before Invest Fest. When you got out the car, me and Pops was rolling. <laughs> 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 Hey, well, how come? How come when I was on tour though, what? and you and Samaya was arguing, and I woke up, all I just see out the side, Samaya looked like he fighting in shadow. <laughs> and I couldn't see your left. <laughs> I said, this nigga went crazy. He just punching the wind, punching the sun. <laughs> I looked down at Steve's lap. <laughs> Kill me out. <laughs> I, I said, no. He's not, I no. <laughs> Steve, they hurt. I thought, His punches hurt. I said, it ain't going to be nothing left to Steve. Boy, I can't Stop let this it. shit happen. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I just thought about having to make that call to your mom. <laughs> Stop I it, I said, man. fuck all that. No. That way too much. <laughs> I already knew how he fight. I seen y'all fight. Oh, oh, shit, this is nothing. But that's different, though, because I can slam somebody. You can't. <laughs> I can, too, nah. bro. I ain't weak, bro. You see, I be lifting hundreds and shit in the gym, bro. I be surprising y'all niggas. Man, really? that be legs. I'd be like, damn, I ain't all this nigga was that strong for real. Now, little people strong, bro. I always knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I probably. <laughs> Come on, man, let's get this shit rolling, big dog. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. You get tired of that, don't you? What? Having to call people big dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we rolling already? Okay, oh, good. Oh, shit. Good. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we keep it all that. Let me get one of them drinks real quick. Uh, get this shit off, man. <laughs> <laughs> Got this little ass on the floor. Yeah, I had to eat like that. Oh, man. You wildin', brother. Oh. <sighs> First. Woo, this is not sponsored. We can blur this out. Mm-hmm. Man, nothing like ginger beer, though. Oh, that's the best drink on the planet, I promise you. 